You guys remember when we all clapped together to like rewrite it? Let's try it on three. One, two, three. Cool. Welcome to another episode of Personal Questions. This is episode four. I'm here with my friend Matt Everett, Jordan Shepard, and Jared Holmes. We're excited that you're here with us. Um, tonight we're drinking Glenlivet 12 year. Mm. I got this on my 30th birthday. It's been on my top shelf, and I decided to bring it out for this episode. Oh, thanks, man. Mostly because Jared and I have been friends for 15 years. <laughs> At least. At least. So it's been a long time. It's mm-hmm. been a long time. So the, the this is was he's younger than our friendship. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's I like good. that. So I, like the, that. Um, I totally made that up on the spot. That that was just that thought it was we're sharing that. Okay. So uh, you guys can put ice in your glass, Jared. Would you like ice in yours? Yes. Okay. Because you, I'm gonna pour yours first because you're the guest of the show. Thank you. That's scotch, right? This is scotch. So the deal with scotch, for those of us who don't know, is that normally a thing where... That's like a splash of water? Yeah. And not... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If for those of you that want it that way, I'm sacrilegious, so I put (laughs) more ice in mine. (laughs) Like, aficionados would be, like, looking at this and being like, you guys are assholes. Um, I'm not Once again, I want to establish a rule. Like, uh, when we first started this show... We had to finish the bottle. That is not a rule. <laughs> and honestly, with it being a Wednesday night and the fact that my wife could have my second son at any moment, yeah. I'm going to take it a little easy. I think it's wise. So, I have oh, to thank you tomorrow. Thank so. you. Cool. So, no. <laughs> uh, did I miss anything with the introduction, guys? I feel like that's, no. that's all of it. That's great. I think it's a good introduction. I think we should cheers. 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 Yeah. To episode four and to Jared. Yay. Yay. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, we should probably drink after that. <laughs> wow. So, I'm not going to start with Matt tonight. Because I always start with <laughs> Matt. You always start with so, Matt. So, like, I always, leave, I always leave Matt up for the chocolate block. It's usually the first 15 minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever movie-related thing I'm doing this week. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to come back, don't worry oh, God. Uh, I do need to give a shout out to my wife She is the um, background director of this episode She helped me with these questions By helped, I mean, these are her questions <laughs> She's going for the kill She's going in, in for the kill because she's known all of us And she knew that I could have been Tried to go on a um, Cheesy historical route with Jared And with everybody here Because mm-hmm. Jared is here Also, we've all known each other probably longer lo- The longest out of everybody that's been on the show so far. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, I am going to start with Jordan. Oh, fantastic. Wow. So, <laughs> just not the game. <laughs> Is it she wrote these? Yeah. Just keep uh, so, do I need to pre apologize to anybody? No, not yet. These are what we call <laughs> well, bangers, right? Uh, like, we, oh, yeah. So, like, uh, out the gate now, there's no such thing as, like, I'm going to, like, softly lead into personal. Like, they're all, like, here we go. Straight between the ribs. <laughs> not to waste any of your time. Right. Good. So, I'm Jordan, nervous. imagine someone else is describing you to another person. So, anybody. Okay. You're not there to hear it. Okay. So, they're speaking candidly. What is a positive description someone might give of you? And what is a negative description that someone will give of you? So, God, this is like an interview. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's not just an interview. So, like, one of the things that we've discovered in this show is that we might sometimes construct a story... That is pretty safe. So this one, like, you're definitely mm-hmm. constructing a story, but this is like someone speaking candidly about you. So imagine we're all Kate aware. We're or all Matt aware of or me people. or Jared <laughs> are, are speaking, like, a positive thing about you and a negative thing about you. When I say we're all aware, I don't mean... <laughs> I mean, like, everyone at the back of their mind probably has a decent conception of, like, what they're perceived as. So Maybe. We're about to find out. <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels. <laughs> I mean, if you don't, it's some sort of psychosis. Let's be honest. If you don't know Here how you're being this, perceived. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I really can't mess this one up. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're the leader. You're out the gate. Right. This is like, you get to show Jared how this, how this one's done. Fair. Okay. So positive, what I think somebody would say about me that's positive. Yes. Um, so I think one thing that I've learned, whether that's through time and experience or whatever, is um, I've tried to become a really good listener. 
So that's been a, a thing that I think would be like a good quality. Mm -hmm. So whether people are, are hurting or something's like going wrong, I'm a big fan of kind of sticking with it for the long haul with people and asking the follow up questions too, saying mm -hmm. like, well, how does that make you feel? Like, how does that, how does that mm -hmm. go? So I think if there's something that has been reflected back to me before through, I don't know, we do like the birthday affirmation stuff. We go around this table and say what we like about people. Mm -hmm. That one comes up a lot for me. It's like, oh, Jordan will just sit with you in what you're in and kind of listen. So I think that's my gut is what people would say. Or one of the things that people would say that that's positive. Okay, pause it. Yeah, it's very true because that's why he's on the show as my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. Yep. Just, so it's good. Yeah, Got you're that a good right. listener. <laughs> yeah. Passes the bullshit test. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> right. I think across the board. Oh, good well, answer. The negatives though, and this is this is where I don't know. Maybe this is where it, what it means to be human, but I feel like there's like a million negatives, right? That I could yeah. list like right away. A million things. But I'm trying to contextualize it. And yeah, say, it's what supposed would, to be like your perceived. perceived. So like this is generally, I mean, it's asking the question of like what you're kind of scared people might be thinking of you. Right. In the negative light. I right. mean, that's really what it kind of is getting at. Right. So I think people would probably say that I'm, I worry whether or not I'm right or not. Or try to put off whether or not I'm right. What do you mean? Oh, I'm not. No, that's a fair question to unpack. Um, I don't like going first. I empathize with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fun part of this. Um, no, I think, so I think a thing that I struggle with, I would say, is trying to put off the vibe that I know. That I know mm. what's going on. That like I've got, I've, got the, I've got the goods that I can like, I'm competent in the situation. Right, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like, hey, not necessarily I know what you've gone through, but I have something, I have something to say, and I have, I have the right thing to say, or I can perceive, like what's true in the situation. Got that's it. how I feel comfortable. So, you're, I'm trying to track as like as a negative. Mm -hmm. That means then like, people will catch on that you're bullshitting. Yeah. So like I, I could be like come across as someone who comes across maybe a little arrogant, a little like distance, right? Like. Uh, I just kind of know what's going on. Or, like you're saying, bullshit. Like, I'll just bullshit you mm -hmm. on something to try to feel or come across mm -hmm. as competent mm -hmm. in the situation. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? Trying to, like, piece that part of it together. Because I'm, I'm terrified that I'm not competent. I'm terrified that I'm not... I don't have enough information or enough knowledge to, like... Why be okay enough in the situation or, or to be good enough for the situation. You said that people have, like, millions of flaws. And, yeah. like, it's part of being human. Yeah. Why is that the one that comes up to the top of the list? Uh, for me, for I, think it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty big one for me, right? So I have not been told, as in the sense of, like, verbally told, but I have interpreted things in my life as that failed or you failed or you were a failure because you didn't know enough hmm. or because you weren't prepared okay. enough. Okay. Right, because you didn't see the truth. You need to just find out what's true. And then you'll be able to handle the situation appropriately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can go into what feels like the obvious one for me, which is my divorce or whatever, which is like, if I would have only seen the truth or if I knew it was right, I never would have gotten into that or I would have avoided that or I would have maybe handled this situation different and that would have ended things differently. So for me, if I've got the knowledge, then I feel capable enough to be like, all right, I know how to handle this. So when I don't know what's going on or I don't know how I'm feeling or I don't know, man, I just start to spin. Like, I just start to panic. Mm -hmm. so knowledge as, like, a security blanket. In a lot Absolutely. Of ways. Not a security blanket as much as, like, a compass of, like, if I have these facts that right. I can act accordingly as long as I have all the facts. Yeah, like, I, I, know, I know what to do in this situation. To be perceived as competent, secure, safe, good, whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay. So if I okay. know what's going on and I know what's true then, like, okay, I'm good. Like, I got it. I know how to handle this new person because I figured them out and I can give you them like, what they you need. Like, you like figuring people oh, out. I love figuring people out. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite. Because then I, then I get to serve them up what is good, what they want to hear, mm -hmm. and then I'm insulated and then I'm safe. Call you, back you, to... You, do, you realize the irony of, like, being a good listener is, like, your best quality and mm -hmm. then also, like, your... <laughs> <laughs> you're you're listening also to be like, oh, so I can make sure that I'm okay. 
Uh, oh, 100%. like you could be. I don't think you're always doing that. That's well, not what I'm trying to it say. Is, but it like, is the other, it is the scary half of the good quality of me. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's basically saying like, then I have to check myself on this. Am I listening to somebody to try and bolster their view of me? Am I trying to be the guy that listens? The good listener. I'm the good listener. Am I trying to be that guy? Or do I actually have empathy for this person, care about how they're doing, want to know if they're okay or not? Mm -hmm. And being a good listener to me is, it, it is a skill that you, you work through. It's a good but, muscle. Yeah, it's a great muscle to have. But I'll be a good listener at work, and then the reality is, I'm just trying to get a project done. Right. Like, I'm trying to get this done. And the empathy, the true empathy, maybe isn't there, and I'm kind of just... Hey, has that, you go. Has that skill it. helped you in the worst parts of your life at all? Or did that fail you? Being a good listener? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, helped me, it's helped me sometimes get through hard situations. But what ends up happening for me is if I do that enough, if I use it as a bad tool, the lack of like, emotional connection just kind of piles up. And it just mm -hmm. gets like, more and more and more and more. And eventually you're like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I know anything mm -hmm. about Jordan. That's the, mm. oh, that's a common thing I think a lot of people would say about me too is, oh yeah I love that guy great listener whatever I don't know anything about him, like pulling teeth. It's like pulling teeth to get me to talk, and I'm actually really good at you. Somebody coming up to me, you do this to me all the time. Well, I want to hear about you, man. I'm like, oh yeah, and I'll give you one nugget, and then I'll figure out how to spin it back to you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and it's super frustrating. Yeah. Well, because here's my experience. <laughs> <laughs> my, my experience is people don't care. Right. Not really. Right. The, most like people, people really yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, most people, I don't, shouldn't say that. That's a really blanket statement. A lot of people really enjoy hearing themselves talk I think over actually do. listening. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I think that to me, like, that's why this is, this whole concept of this show to me mm -hmm. is unbelievably uncomfortable <laughs> because oh, it, when I have to share, mm -hmm. right, it's easy to just ask Jared, a guy I love, just ask him questions. Right. How are you feeling? What's going on? But to me, to be like, here's For where you I'm to at. be the center of the... No, I hate it. Right now, I'm just dying inside. <laughs> this, is, this is awful. Kate knows. Kate, Kate knows. And I feel like that's like should be the all per... Like, <laughs> like when when we think we're going off path, just go, Kate knows. <laughs> like, I'm get back on path. <laughs> is that, what do you, so so I'm, now I'm curious. I'm, not, I'm asking the question. I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to be that guy. But now I'm curious. Is that is that surprising to you that that was my answer? Um, you guys know me for a while. I mean, it's been I, years. I, I don't. I don't think it was surprising. I think it's interesting from a perspective of like, I, if it's in the context of someone else talking about you, mm -hmm. I feel like it might be slightly off. But I think it's definitely your the idea of it. Have. Like, like yeah, the feeling mm -hmm. that you have. Because I don't. I think. There might be other things from like a negative perspective that other people might say, but mm -hmm. I, I also I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, so it's I think it's very close. I think it's you're right about it being the dark side of your good skill, mm -hmm. which I think is most people's like. <clears throat> I have this really positive trait. The inverse of that is like very. It's right. like the the bizarro part of the good trait. Well, and it's it does feel like that's pretty common, at least in in my experiences. If I'm really good at something, or if something feels like it's going well, it feels like there's an equal uh, competency that's bad, mm -hmm. that it's like kind of co-developing mm -hmm. that I'm not necessarily doing, right? I'm not necessarily trying to manipulate people by listening to them well, but right. I could be. Right. So being a good listener means this suddenly becomes easier. Yeah. If I wanted to really just kind of like phone it in for somebody, I could. Right. So right. It, it, it does feel like the constant struggle. And I know I do that sometimes. Like I, I can't lie. Yeah, I mean, like, you are human. Yeah, so I mean, that's where I would, I think I, I see that as kind of like, oh, he's the guy that listens really well, that's the great quality. And then the bad quality that somebody would say is just like, yeah, but the guy's like fakes it, you know what I mean? The guy phones it in. Right. And he doesn't want to talk about himself and he just avoids everything. Right. Well, I mean, this is kind of the irony of this show. Like last mm -hmm. episode, before we started, Jared, uh, Kate was like, this is a really great idea, but you guys are not being as vulnerable as you should be. You're kind of being like, kind of vulnerable you're yeah. giving like the like the first couple episodes I, I think we were definitely trying to chink through the armor but we were definitely doing like oh i know how to be kind of vulnerable so i'll give you the outside layer i read a Brene brown book i know what i'm doing right <laughs> <laughs> right but like it wasn't necessarily like oh this is currently what's happening right. inside which is 
harder to get at because it it is being recorded and it's not necessarily like. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also had a lot of booze the first couple of episodes, so yeah, I was like, are we actually being vulnerable? Or are we, like, just drunk? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. there's those kinds of things. <laughs> are, we vulnerable uh, or are we vulnerable or just drunk? That's a big difference. So I think that was a fantastic answer. And I also, like, from the perspective of, like, I could tell that you were internally kind of going, like, oh. Struggle bus. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's also, like, going first is, is, is hard again. Empathy, my dude, because I I do feel like there's a probably something deeper to that. I just or or a different answer that I could come up with. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like I, I honestly don't feel like I could tell you right now. You know what I mean? I could oh, yeah. sit on that, and reflect on it, but no. And I, and I, I'm not. Another thing is I don't want it to be disingenuous. Like what deep dark secret must I share in this moment? That's yeah. not what I'm trying to get. Like I think your answer was still on point for like where yeah. you're currently at. No, it's, I mean it's really true. I I've gone on a few dates with the same person recently. <laughs> You know, that's, that's always a fun experience. And one of the one of the things I, I <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of this. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> one of the, one of the things I I told her was basically like, oh yeah, just so you know, I don't trust women. Like, I just told her straight up because it was just like, I've I've learned that that people bail, that like that's what goes on, and that people aren't really that interested. And that's been a, a somewhat of a feminine experience in my life. So. That, like, whole manipulative trying to get somebody to listen, I had to really quickly mitigate, even in the times that we were just hanging out um, at the get-go. It was like, hey, just so you know, I'm actually genuinely interested in this, and this is also mm-hmm. a worry spot for me. Mm-hmm. So just so you know, I'm asking you a lot of questions, mm-hmm. but I'm also terrified at the same time. Like, those okay. two things are coexisting right now. So it's that's kind of what's on my mind in the recent days. That's fantastic. <laughs> well done. Cheers to you. Thank you. Cheers to you. Whew. Way to go Good first. Job. It's weird, isn't it's it? It's in gym class. It's like going first in gym class. You're like, oh, thank God. Well, like, when I get asked the first question, it's normally something like pretty light. So, thanks. But the Kate. last one wasn't very light. <laughs> the, last no, the last one was like, when's the last time you felt in control of your life? And you were like, ha, blah, blah, blah. I tell myself, <laughs> what does that day, mean? But I don't even believe You it. do have to, like, it does feel like you got to, like, ramble a little bit more than you, you would, put man. Yeah. Okay, man. I is that a rim shot? This is a choked crash. Is what that is. These are fresh tattoos. Fresh Anyways, tattoos. Uh, I'm going to move on to Jared now. Uh, Ooh. So wait, going Matt's going to go last? Uh, I, you, I saw my question, eat, so and I don't want to answer Did you read it already? I saw it. <laughs> don't so why do you think I poured another drink? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jared, you, yes. after you answer, you can either A, ask me a personal question, or we can move to Matt, and you can kind of think on the question okay. you would like to ask me. So... Being one of your closest friends for 15 years, uh, I know that being a gay man in West Michigan has had its fair share of ups and downs for you. I want you to think of the one noteworthy positive emotion, not experience, emotion, and one noteworthy uh, negative emotion that you experienced here and tell us about the process of those feelings. Best and worst emotional experiences as a gay man in GR. In GR. In GR. In GR. Because, like, the reality is, like, because it's been, he, he, not many gay men stay in Grand Rapids. No. And, like, Kate and I talked about this. Like, mm-hmm. like the, this vein is where I wanted to go because part of the personal questions is, like, in Grand Rapids, a lot of gay men stay closeted because Grand Rapids is still learning how to, like, yeah. West Michigan in general. Or mm-hmm. they used to at the very right, least. Right. Yeah. So but people in my age group. Right. For sure. Younger yep, yeah, for sure. Younger, I, the younger generation is definitely yeah. doesn't give a shit. Younger flying their flags all over the place. Right. Because <laughs> everybody's gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But uh, so the question is your positive emotional experience mm. and a negative emotional experience. So like you can go as deep or as wide as you'd like here because I know that you could probably talk about this for Three hours. Yeah. Build a case. We, don't, we have about an hour. The yeah. Total. <laughs> um, thanks, Kate. <laughs> I think that means a middle finger. I don't know if that's actually a thing. No, she knows me too well. Um, I have no idea where to start. Uh, Do you want to start with the positive? Yeah. Is that easier? Well, I mean, there's nothing like that's coming to like mind. Like what you said it's going to be super easy to find the negatives because mm-hmm. they're the ones that stick out. Um, the positives, though. 
Um, you can start with the negatives if yeah, you want. That's negative. a, there's no rules here. Like you, get, it's yeah. your answer. I know, but I, I'm gonna, I don't even know a positive to get to. Right. Um. Yeah, I guess we can start with the negative. What would the negative experience? Emotional. Emotional experience. Because like for like for you probably had moments of like growing up where, um, oh, it's not necessarily safe with me to come out in this context, in which that's kind of an experience. It's definitely also an emotion, but it's yeah, also an experience. Because it's like West Michigan. Right. Um, so, but like, I'm, so I'm wondering about your internal mean. struggle with that because of like, I mean, like it could be in relationship to family well, or friendships or, you know, that kind of thing. I think what I would, I think what I would go with is this <clears throat> long extended period of emotional experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, if anybody's watched or listen to like coming out stories and things like that. There's always the, you know, who do I tell? Who do I not tell? Um, and, and there's the whole process of identifying yourself in your own head as gay and testing the waters and seeing how people respond. And sometimes you're asking questions like, mm-hmm. oh, so-and-so at school came out and see how the people around you mm-hmm. respond because that's how you gauge is this person going to be okay with me mm-hmm. and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. For the most part, I had, I mean, my coming out process, I mean, you know, this, my coming out process was long and drawn out. Um, and you know, Give some one foot how, out. how long do you think it actually took out to, took to fully come out? Cause when I met you, you were not fully like fully mm-hmm. out. You were definitely like, I am a gay man, but I'm trying, trying not, not to be at it. Yeah. Which is a very, uh, which is, I, I'd say it more regional. Like, it's not that, I mean, it definitely, in the past, it was definitely a thing. Yeah. Way more, right. but like here. It would have, yeah. I mean, it, it, it had primarily to do uh, with the region, probably. You know, like the if and when, or, or the possibility of like, had I grown up in Chicago or the East Coast or one of the coasts or something like that in these, you know, U.S. gay meccas or something like that, um, my life would be dramatically different. Mm -hmm. Um, But being in a classic and maybe even stereotypical Midwest conservative area, um, so the question you were kind of asking was like how long, I think like it would have been in and out of the closet from junior and senior year and then- Of high school? Of high school, Mm -hmm. of high school. And then um, the the period that I would say that I was like, nope, this is the way things are, is when I got back from Ireland. Because that's when I sat <gasps> you and Nicholas yeah. down. And oh, my I said, gosh. Because before I had I'd been asking you and everybody else, I'd, I was asking you guys to help me not be gay. When, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, is which from? is a weird, which was is an interesting experience. Yeah, right. Where is that coming from? Yeah, oh, the I desperate th- desire to please. Mm. The, well, I, I I can give a brief context to this because like this is this is a hard to core backstory. Like you grew up super Catholic. Mm-hmm. This Catholic guilt is a real thing. Really? You really like the mm-hmm. experiences that kind of fostered you in that environment. Like it's not necessarily all right. Or you could be a, you could right. be a celibate gay man yes. as a priest. That's like totally acceptable. But like. You could not be you could not be in love with another gay man or have any physical con like there's all these other things that actually there's like, uh, you like you could be the thing is is it's like literally you can do everything except have sex right hmm. everything you can be in love I, because there's uh you know there's groups and stuff out there um, of people religious in the religious you know even Catholic group that are celibate and are married gay men hmm. or I don't know if they're married. Um, I guess they're, but they're partnered for the last 30 years. And, um, and you know, that's a a choice that they've made. Um, and which is kind of mind boggling. Yeah. It's mind boggling to me, but at the same time being the kind of person I am, I'm like, you do you good, good on you. Just like, you know, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, so back on track. Back on track. Yeah, you back came track. came back. What year was that? Your junior year of college. That was junior year of college. So like you. So yeah. that's four years. Yeah, that's four of years of like the struggle of like uh, out in, in and out, out in. like dramatic, like heart wrenching, kneeling before God, uh, multiple 
times. Uh, two hour drives, mm-hmm. crying, heart breaking apart, and then trying to put it back together. Um, and these deep uh, wrestling, I, it's that, that term wrestling with God is the one that came up. Um, when in reality, I don't think I was ever wrestling with God. I was wrestling with my guilt and with uh, the church and with a bunch of human things. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I was wrestling with God. Um, but that's all 2020 hindsight. Right, right. Um, so I think that would be the, the biggest negative experience. Because I feel like, and I guess to expand on that, I, I feel like that put me behind in a normal human development stage sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very envious of these kids that are, whose parents are just like, good on you for your sexuality in like fourth or fifth grade now meaning like these kids uh might ask well like those like the high schoolers on ellen or whatever you know the Mm -hmm. dude gets to ask the person that he wants to prom to prom right right? and everybody's like go for it that's awesome Mm -hmm. and uh the high schoolers and junior hires get to go through the process of dating like all the other straight kids get to. Mm-hmm. And that whole process helps you build these little things of like, I like this, I don't like this, I do like this, I don't like this. You know, like a two-week relationship that, you know, people have in seventh, eighth grade, freshman year. Um, right. Those are little things that you learn how to be around people that you're attracted to. And then to have to wait until the end of college to even say... I'm okay with dating Mm -hmm. because it wasn't even then. Like I I then had to start dating somebody and then had all that guilt of like, well, what, you know, maybe this person's too feminine or Mm -hmm. too this or too that or too Mm -hmm. much for my family Mm -hmm. because it was always that context back of like, I didn't even get a chance to just enjoy spending time with somebody and getting to knowing them and then worrying about them meeting my family in the future. Mm -hmm. It was like, I would cut it off after two or three weeks. Be like, "Eh, no, Mm. I don't know how my, my cousins will react weird to you or even though they probably wouldn't or, you know, God knows how my mom's going to react, you know, and, and things like that. So that I think would be the, the negative part of so the, the, let me so like if I were yeah. to sum it up like the negative side your emotional experience is really how long and extended your own comfortability with accepting yeah being gay within the culture that you were in like culture meaning West Michigan culture yeah but getting through like, the stages of coming out mm-hmm. was so drawn out for me right was so long right. and it and the, it's you know, a thing I'm I'm always trying to work on is not not having regrets, but it's like, oh god damn, if I could just go back, like how would I would do it all right. so different. Right. So you had you had people like Kate in and you said Nick as well, who, yeah. were, who were like with you and who loved you like deeply the entire time. Did you ever have anybody who was out and gay in that context speaking into your life in that season when you were wrestling with it? Did you have kind of somebody that was where you were? No. No. Not even close. I had I had plenty of people who were online, um, and at that point in time, it Lots was more... Lots of messaging, right? Yeah. At that point in time, it was more AOL mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and chat rooms. So there were people that, like, I was talking to... Jared's not that old, by the way. Not it's old. not... <laughs> we all have names. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but, you know... Uh, pre-smartphone, pre-apps. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, there were people that, like, I would have, you know, an internet friendship with that I could talk to a little bit occasionally. Excuse it's me. not the same thing as someone yeah. sitting next no, to you and like, being like, correct. this is how you could do this. And, you know, like, in a lot of the stuff that I, I uh, in my studies, uh, you know, one of the big things that they, they that we find for gay men is just having somebody to like look up to you that you can connect with mm-hmm. so like when Will and Grace came out that was super helpful for me mm-hmm. because I got to see normal people and a lot and, a, a, and they have a huge variety of different mm-hmm. uh, gay characters on those shows that you could be like oh yeah okay I can I can identify with that I, I don't identify with that though right um, so yeah that was that was probably one of the hardest parts was there wasn't an example right yeah I think that would be it 
that would be why it took so long. There wasn't a, an example. I didn't have an example. I didn't have a, a strong gay uh, man anywhere in the spectrum. It doesn't even have to be a friend. Like, I didn't have an older gay mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. or uh, someone my age or even just a little bit older than me yeah. that I could talk to about any of this stuff. Right. Because the, especially within, and maybe I, I should, to my understanding within the gay culture, like, in your experience, there was a lot of, it was more for you at that stage, just about a lot more, like, you guys meeting to, like, not talk about your sexuality um, at that, that time. At that time um, in my life, I, no, I would say no <laughs> to that. No, 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 not, not no, like, no as in, there, there was no meeting up for me at right. that period in my that's life. That's right. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, that sort of thing wasn't a part of my life at that, that period. Like I was very old and yeah, not, <laughs> I mean, not the same as everybody else <laughs> He's making when, sure it it's still on. To, when it comes to their sexuality. Gorgeous. Cool. So, all right. So we talked about the negative right. of your experience in Grand Rapids and I probably think that there's a lot more men in your shoes around here that probably grew up very similarly. So yeah, I know, I know that's kind of, it's not, it's not an easy first question out the gate, but I am curious if there was any positive emotional experiences in the midst of all of that. I, I do have that, a question to kind of like navigate that way. Sure. So that the whole first massive part of your life was filled with that guilt, that shame, that doubt. And it's interesting. I just, I've never put it together of like, why when you know you see a pride parade why is it called a pride parade why isn't it just like a parade of gay people and yeah. so like <laughs> so <laughs> it, I, I've never had that thought but I'm glad that you did <laughs> right. but, but, so glad that you did but see that's the, the sense that pride now would play in that life of being able to take ownership of that and not only and no longer have it be a point of shame but a point of pride mm-hmm. what was the, the first one of the first moments you were actually able to feel pride in who you were. That's it. That is a good follow-up question. 